<laughs> okay, so imagine this for a sec. You're cruising on your Windows PC, right? But it feels like, like super snappy, you know, like your smartphone. No waiting around, just smooth sailing. That was kind of the whole idea behind Windows on ARM, WOA we're calling it. And today we're going way back, like 2012, back to Microsoft when they first jumped into this whole thing. Yeah, the tech world was like freaking out with excitement. And lucky for us, we get this inside scoop from this blog post by Steven Sanofsky. He was the big cheese at Windows back then. And he like spills the tea on how they made WOA happen, the engineering craziness, the tough calls, all of it. You said it. I mean, ARM processors, they were just starting to get big in phones and tablets. But Windows on this new hardware, that was a whole other rodeo. Oh, totally a gamble. See, yeah. ARM and by 86, what most PCs used back then, they were like totally different animals. ARM was all about efficiency, sipping that battery life. Yeah. But getting 86, man, it guzzled power. But it could handle all those heavy-duty Windows programs. So how do you bridge that gap? Make an operating system known for, well, not being so efficient, suddenly play nice on this whole efficiency platform. That's where the no compromise thing comes in. Sanoski? He's all about bringing that complete Windows experience to WOA. Desktop, all your go-to apps, the whole shebang, but with crazy good battery life. It was a tall order, needed a level of teamwork you rarely see in tech. Teamwork? They didn't try to go solo on this, did they? No way. Microsoft knew they couldn't swing it alone. They joined forces with the heavy hitters of the ARM world, NVIDIA, Qualcomm, Texas Instruments, like assembling a super team. I can only imagine those brainstorming sessions. So, big vision best minds on it, but how do you even start making Windows work on totally different hardware? Where do you even begin? It's all about the foundation, the nitty gritty of how Windows talks to the hardware. Sanofsky gets into the weeds, explaining how they had to create new firmware specs. It's how Windows talks to the ARM processor, things like UESAFI and ACPI. Most people have never even heard of them, but without them, Windows wouldn't even start up. Okay, so they got Windows chatting with the ARM processor. What about everything else? Connecting to Wi-Fi, using a Bluetooth mouse, mm. all that stuff we just expect on a PC. Good point. They had to make drivers for a ton of components that were normal in the ARM world, but not so much in PCs. I2C, SDIO, EMMC, all those behind-the-scenes technologies that let your PC use peripherals and storage. Crazy how much is going on behind the scenes, and we just, like, plug in a USB drive and expect it to work. Right. And they didn't just want it to work. They wanted that polished feel, that premium Windows experience. Yeah. And that meant tackling graphics. Yeah, because janky graphics, that wouldn't exactly say premium, would it? What was their approach? ARM processors then had these powerful GPUs, you know, graphics processing units. They could handle amazing visuals, but they needed drivers, software that translates between Windows and the GPU. And making those drivers, that was no walk in the park. So did they just hit pause on the whole project while they waited for these drivers to magically appear? They got clever. Sanofsky talks about this soft GPU thing they came up with. <laughs> Basically, a software-based graphics driver directly controlling the display. It was like a temporary bridge. Got Windows working on WOA without waiting for those super complex hardware-specific drivers to be ready. That's seriously clever. But even with the quick fix, getting decent performance and battery life out of those early WOA devices, that must have been like, I don't even know. Like trying to fit a square peg in a round hole. Exactly. And that's where hardware offloading enters the picture. Imagine a restaurant. Instead of one chef doing everything, you've got cooks for each dish. That's hardware offloading. So the main processor isn't doing all the heavy lifting, things like video or encryption. It's handled by dedicated hardware, so the processor can just focus on running the system and apps smoothly. You got it. It's like having specialized teams for each task, making everything smoother and saving that precious battery life. Yeah. And they were, like, obsessed with efficiency, you know, making that ARM architecture really sing. And that went for the software, too. Sanofsky, he was all about this tightly controlled software world for WOA. Okay, so we've got the hardware grooving, but then you've got the software. Getting Windows itself running on something totally new is one thing, but all those Windows programs, all those apps that people use every day, getting those to work on WOA, that's... A whole other can of worms. Uh -huh. And Microsoft, they made a call, and looking back, it was, well, kind of risky. They basically said, let's hit reset on app compatibility. Whoa, wait, so they made it hard to run regular Windows programs on WOA. Why would they do that? Sounds crazy, right? But they were so gung-ho about WOA being fast, secure, efficient, they saw these old Windows apps, you know, with code from way back, as a problem. So they were willing to give up compatibility, which made Windows, well, Windows all in the name of performance. That was the gamble. Yeah. They figured if we make a clean break, 
we can get this new wave of apps, apps made just for WOA, for touchscreens, for saving battery, the whole deal. That's a big bet. But what about people who needed specific programs for work, for their stuff? What were they supposed to do? Yeah, it was a tough sell. Microsoft, they tried to make it work, you know. Sanofsky talks about how they included, like, the desktop versions of Office on WOA because, come on, a Windows PC without Word or Excel. It's like a car without an engine. Exactly. Mm. But getting those programs, which can be total resource hogs, to run well on WOA. That must have been a challenge. Big time. They had to, like, rewrite big parts of the code, make sure those apps played nice with touch screens, and, of course, make them use less power. They didn't want Office to feel like an afterthought on WOA. Right. They wanted it to feel like it belonged there. It sounds like they put a lot of effort into making this new thing work with what people already needed. But asking people to maybe ditch their familiar software, that's a big ask. No doubt. And honestly, that was a big hurdle for WOA. People weren't exactly lining up to switch to something where their favorite programs might not work. Oh. This way with Apple's iPad. You know, it was really taking off back then. Ah, uh, yes, the iPad. This was 2012. The tablet revolution was in full swing. Did Sanofsky ever mention how they saw this new competition? Was WOA supposed to be like the answer to the iPad? He doesn't come right out and say iPad, but you can tell Microsoft knew things were changing. They had to adapt, had to offer something as cool as those sleek touch devices everyone loved. So where did WOA fit in? Were they thinking super portable, business users? What was the target? Sanofsky talks about thin and light designs, long battery, that tight hardware software combo. Mm. They wanted WOA PCs to be the best of both worlds. Portable and stylish like a tablet, but powerful like a real Windows machine. So they were trying to find a new space for WOA, something different from regular PCs and tablets. Exactly. And they were banking on the Windows name that people knew and trusted, while also going after those who like the simplicity of, say, an iPad. It's a tough balancing act trying to please everyone. But did they pull it off? Did they convince those Windows fans and the people into touch screens that WOA was the future? Well, that's where things get really, really interesting. So big vision, they had the tech and they were tuned in to what was happening in the market. But the big question is, did WOA, you know, right off into the sunset? Did it work? Well, like with anything this ambitious, there were, let's just say, bumps along the road. Remember that whole reset on apps we talked about? Yeah. Yeah, that didn't go over so well for a lot of people. It's tough to break habits, right? Especially with tech, people get used to things. For sure. And Microsoft, they were hoping developers would jump in, make tons of apps for WOA. But uh, it didn't quite pan out that way. Developers, they weren't so keen on investing in something that didn't have a ton of users yet. Classic chicken and egg problem. You need the users for the apps, but you need the apps to get the users. Yeah, exactly. And that's where Sanofsky's blog post, it kind of leaves us hanging. We're left with this picture of a project about to launch, full of potential, but also a lot of unknowns. He doesn't get to tell us what happened next. Which is kind of cool for us, right? We get to look back and see how it all played out. Totally. And I think that's what's so interesting here. WOA, maybe it wasn't the smash hit Microsoft hoped for, but it made them think differently about what a Windows PC could be. It pushed them to try new things, rethink how hardware and software work together, and adapt to a changing world. Like a testing ground for new ideas. Some stuck, some, well, maybe you weren't quite ready. Exactly. WOA's legacy, it's still here in subtle ways. Uh. Touchscreens, energy efficiency, a more streamlined approach to apps. These are all things that are still shaping Windows today. So even if WOA didn't take over the world, it still left its mark. Absolutely. It reminds us that innovation isn't always about winning right away. Sometimes it's about pushing boundaries, questioning everything, and planting those seeds that might take a while to grow. Well said. And that, my friend, wraps up our deep dive into Windows on ARM. We went back in time, saw the ambition, the ingenuity, and yeah, even the stumbles. That made this such a fascinating chapter in tech history. It's been great digging into all this with you. And to everyone listening, don't stop exploring. Keep those questions coming. Keep digging for answers. Keep up with the ever-changing world of tech. Who knows what you'll discover.